Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kathy, and today we're going to be painting a series of baked goods with watercolor. These are fairly simple subjects because they don't require a lot of wet on wet, and the finished products, no matter how good or bad you think they are, will still look delicious. Fair warning, cake cravings will be happening. If you're new, I do art process videos and essay style videos, where I talk about my creative process and generally ramble about one thing or another. So be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get alerts on tasty videos like this in the future. Let's get to it! So the first one is going to be a croissant. I'm sketching out the shape of the pastry and the sharpest lines of the layers, as well as the shadow. I'm using Stonehenge Aqua for all the paintings today. And for the watercolors, I'm using mostly Magello Mission Gold. You'll find a list of all the materials in the description. With the sketch done, I'm laying down a wash of Windsor Newton's raw sienna mixed with Magello yellow ochre. With the first layer dried, I'm loading my brush with a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna and brushing it across the croissant in a kind of zigzag motion, leaving gaps in between for the highlights. For this part, I think the rougher and more imperfect, the better. So I'm not worrying about even washes, I'm actually searching out the blooms and interesting textures, putting firm pressure on my brush and scraping it harshly in a downward direction. Rough dry brushing is very fun, but it's also a fantastic one-way trip to wear out your brush hairs faster. So I don't recommend using your $90 watercolor brushes for this. The first wash for the shadow is the same raw sienna and yellow ochre mixture that I use for the croissant. For the next layers, I'm using a mix of light red, yellow ochre and burnt sienna, and cobalt blue. 
some areas near the highlights are going to be more red than others, and the more shadowed areas are going to be more blue in tone. This part is kind of tricky. It's very easy to follow the reference photo layer by layer, pixel by pixel, and create something that looks exactly like a photocopy, which isn't really my goal today. So I'm trying not to get bogged down by the fine details. For the shadow, I'm laying down a wash of cobalt blue mixed with yellow ochre to the initial wash I did earlier. For the details, I'm switching to a smaller round brush and adding small marks here and there. The second painting is a cake, and I'm keeping it even simpler with the colors, using mostly sap green, olive green, and a mix of rose matter and permanent red.
We're keeping the right side in the shadows. And I'm painting the shadowed part of the berries as a big single shape for the moment and gradually add in more details as I go along. So the green part is the cake layer, whereas the red is like the mousse layer. So I'm keeping the top a little more smooth in texture, and the bottom part a bit more textured with dry brushing and visible brush marks. For the third and final painting, a blueberry cupcake, we're starting off with a light layer of raw sienna. I'm applying it over the whole sketch, except for the very top part of the blueberries, which I'm leaving out as the highlight. Once the first layer is dried, I'm going to use a mix of cerulean blue, plus rose matter, plus a bit of white gouache, and paint over the cream and the blueberries. Once that is dried, I'm applying cerulean blue plus rose matter over just the blueberries, once again leaving certain parts of them white.
The cupcake base and the paper cup is a wash of raw sienna plus cerulean blue. Again, I'm taking care to leave certain parts of it unpainted. For the darkest shadow areas of the cream, I'm using cerulean blue, rose matter, and raw sienna, and we're just going to build it up. The leaves, the three little ears for the cupcake are painted with a mix of cerulean blue and raw sienna, which are just a little more on the yellow-green side than the blueberries. Finally, I add in all the details with a small, round brush. The crumbly pistachio flakes over the frosting, the darkest areas of the cream and the blueberries, and I'm also using white gouache to add in some additional highlights around the blueberries and the leaves. And there you have it, three delicious baked treats. And happy October! The pumpkins are being picked, the skeletons are out, and I think it's a great time all around to indulge in a little baking. Take care of yourself, take care of your box of sheep, and I'll see you in the next one.